Hey guys, it's Stoof here. Welcome back to my painting channel. This month I've been very busy working on commissions and a lot of those commissions are not things I would normally paint just for fun. Uh, so I wanted to kick back and do a fun landscape scene uh, just to change the pace a little bit and relax and see if that'll get me uh, motivated to keep pounding out those commissions. Uh, so we are gonna do an autumn landscape scene on this 12 inch by 16 inch canvas. We're gonna use acrylic paint. We're gonna make this an easy painting for you. So if you're a beginner, I'm gonna do my best to make this easy for you to learn and follow along with me. And if at any point you get lost while you're trying to recreate this painting, uh, just leave a comment below and I will uh, respond to you and hopefully help you out with a future painting. And you will be helping me by letting me know that I need to improve with certain aspects of my teaching. So you guys uh, are helping me out by leaving comments. So I appreciate that. And all right, so let's get back to the painting. So this painting, I had a poll on my Instagram to see which one of four autumn landscape scenes you wanted to learn how to paint the most. So this is the picture that won right here. So we're gonna paint that. And uh, we're gonna have it oriented vertically like this uh, so we can get those nice trees up and down. We're gonna change some things from the reference photograph so that it's a nice original painting and we're not copying that uh, photograph that I found on the internet. Uh, and we're just gonna have some fun together. So grab your painting materials using acrylic paint. Also gonna need some water, some brushes, a palette. I'm just using a wax paper palette. And what else do you need? You need your canvas. And you also need a cup for your water paper towels, if I didn't mention that yet. Uh, and everything is linked in my description below this video uh, on Amazon for you. So just grab those materials you need and get it all set up and then we're ready to get started with this painting. All right, so for an autumn landscape, we definitely need some red. Let's get a nice good bit of red on my palette. We also are gonna need this yellow ochre color Nice fall color. Gonna need some black. Oh. There we go, maybe not too much black. Also going to need brown and yellow. So I have a few different types of brown. This is my nice warmer brown. That's kind of a yellow, orange, and brown mixed together. We also have this brown, which is our burnt umber. And these are the basics, is the brand I'm using here. Those are all in my Amazon. If you just click the link in the description, you'll see my whole painting materials list. So we've got this one, which is our light blue violet. Okay, and we also have this nice light blue. I'm not sure if we'll need that one, but I'm gonna Put some on there anyway. So when you're putting your paint onto your palette, it helps if you put your paint along the edges and then you can do your blending in the center. Get some more green here. All right, we also need some crimson. It's a darker red. Um, cobalt blue, we'll use some of that. There we go. Gonna use some that orange. This one might not be on my Amazon, but I will add that. And we'll do some of this green. This is a sap green, but it's a little bit lighter than our other green. There we go. All right, so those are the basic colors we're gonna need to get started. Okay, now that we have our colors on our palette, we are ready to sketch out the concept onto our canvas. All right, so we got our blue and our brown. And we're just gonna quickly sketch out our scene. I'm gonna put my shoreline here. We got another little shoreline there. Kinda comes up like this. Got some trees. And then we got some trees further back. All right, our sky is up here. And then we've got our foreground basically takes up about this much space and we've got a little path here kind of 
stay straight coming there and getting wider right here. So our little path is going to get thinner as or let you know less thick as it's getting farther away from us and that's going to give us a sense of depth in our painting. So um, when I'm sketching out my concept I'm also dipping my paint brush into the water so that I have a really thin application of paint and that just gives me like a nice quick sketch to work with. I've got some rocks here. Okay, we've got another little island here too. Okay, cool. So now we've got We've got the basic stuff sketched out. We're not gonna add our trees yet because we're using acrylic paint. It's gonna dry pretty quickly. So I'm gonna do the whole sky background first and that'll give us a nice consistent sky. And then we can add our foreground trees later and we'll just paint over the layer of sky that we started out with. We're gonna start with the sky. Starting at the top of the canvas, I'm using a medium sized flat tipped brush. And we're just gonna be doing back and forth brush strokes, holding the brush kind of gently. You don't want to hold it too hard and you don't want to press too hard. You just want to let the paint kind of glide onto the canvas. So for our sky color, I'm going to start out with some of that periwinkle blue mixed with a hint of brown and a hint of this crimson color, hint of black. See that black really does a number on your paint. So I'm just bringing that back up with my white, adding more periwinkle, a little more crimson. All right, there we go. So we've got a nice color to start with, just dipped it in the water, the brush. And we're just gonna do back and forth. And you wanna hold your brush this way, not, not this way so that you make small lines, but this way with the uh, most of the bristles touching the canvas so that you can get a nice, good coverage of paint. And you're just going back and forth with your brush. I'm gonna add a little more white and just kind of let that blend in. So you add a little bit of white to your color and you just keep making back and forth brush strokes. Add more white just directly onto your brush. A little more white again. Just back and forth brush strokes. We're gonna leave a little space up here, a little space over here and this space between the tree line and that cloud. I'm gonna take the excess paint off my brush by dipping it in the water, dabbing it with the paper towel. And I'm gonna take some white, a little bit of yellow, and a hint of that orange. That was way too much orange. So you want it to be close to white, just like a nice warm beige white. And we're just gonna go back and forth again. If it looks too saturated, then just start to add more white. And we're gonna go right down to the tree line that we sketched out. And I'm, gonna, I'm painting over it a little bit because we're gonna, we can still see where that tree line was because we're using a nice light color. So that darker color seeps through. And um, this helps me because this paint will dry and then I won't have any white spaces in between where I'm going to put my trees. They'll just be right there. Now I'm taking a little bit of yellow, mixing it with the white, and we're just going to blend that. And now I'm blending it right up into that blue color. Same back and forth brush strokes. Taking some white. Putting some over here in this spot. Just letting it blend in. And then adding more. 
layers of white. And don't worry too much about the sky if it's not looking perfect yet because this is the farthest thing in the background so it's not going to be too noticeable if you make some mistakes or things look choppy. We have a lot of tree leaves that are going to cover these up soon. Just taking more of that white with a little bit of orange. Bring that up in the top of the sky. Alright, now I'm going to build some shadows in the clouds. So I'm just going to take my existing uh, color for the sky, add a little bit of blue and black, and just kind of build in some shadows very lightly touching the canvas and you don't want to have too much paint on your brush if you start to get too much color in there and it's not blending anymore then wipe all of the paint off of your brush and see if that will help you all right now with my periwinkle blue I'm gonna mix that with a bit of white i'm gonna add a couple clouds down here same brush if you want to switch to a um, round tipped brush that could help but I'm still using my flat tip brush because this is all going to be in the background and we're not going to see it too much but the round tip brush can help you with puffy clouds it can give you nice puffy cloud looks Just adding a few little clouds over top of the paint I already put on. Got like a little bit in here where these clouds are kind of breaking. Alright, I'm actually going to do a little bit more of my orange and white, a little bit of red. yellow there's more white and I'm just gonna make that nice and orange up top there okay good now we've got our base layer done for the sky and the next step is to move forward closer to the foreground so starting way in the back we have our sky next we're gonna start with these trees over here I'm going to switch to a a fine or small uh, round tipped brush so the top of this brush is round instead of flat we're gonna use this guy for the trees and with trees when you're painting trees in a landscape the trees farthest away from you are gonna be less saturated they're gonna have less contrast so the trees farther away from you are gonna have more violets and blues in them and the trees closer to you are gonna have more yellows greens and reds uh, so these trees in the background we're gonna blend some sap green with this color I already made, I'm just going to use some of my existing white. I'm going to mix in a little bit of yellow ochre and some blue. A little bit of my crimson color there. And I'm going to add some more white. A little bit more blue. Alright, and I'm just going to take this brush putting it uh, longitudinal, so long ways, so that we can use the top of the brush to create the appearance of trees. And you don't want every tree to be the same size. Some trees are gonna be higher up, and you're just kind of referencing that line you made before to show where your trees go. Just fill in that space all the way down to the water line. Still keeping your brush up and down. If you want to make a nice straight line for your water line, then you can drag the brush horizontally. Again, not holding the brush too hard. And now we're going to throw in some shadows. So we're going to mix sap green with brown and blue. 
It's kind of a cloudy day, so we don't have like a true intense light source here. We just have a little bit of shadows kind of coming down closer to the bottom of the trees. If you need to mix more paint, just go ahead and do that. If you're a beginner, it can be tough to uh, measure out how much paint to use. Okay, now we're going to throw a little bit of a highlight on these trees. We're going to add some orange too since it's autumn and we can start to see like a hint of color in these trees farther away. Just kind of mix some orange, yellow, yellow ochre and kind of started blending it into my green color. I'm just going to throw like a little bit of this color in the tree tops. I'm not going too crazy with it, just like little hints of it here and there. Already on our wet paint. kind of at the tops going a little bit in a diagonal going down gives us a little bit of a tree line gonna use just some yellow ochre now all right good now we got those trees all set next we're gonna do the shoreline so we're just gonna mix some of my orange brown with my burnt umber and a little bit of blue and a little bit of white dip that in the water so i can get a nice thin layer i'm just going to drag that across the bottom of my tree line that i just painted and now we have like a nice little shoreline to work with And if the paint's too thin, then just let it sit for a minute and do another thicker layer on top of that. All right, next we can start with the water. So my periwinkle blue, my sky blue, tiny, tiny bit of orange and white. And we're just gonna lay this on and probably gonna end up playing with this, but I wanna see how this color looks first. And I'm still using my round tipped brush, um, but a flat tip brush would also work pretty well here. And you're just going to go right up to that line, maybe covering it over it slightly, where we painted our shoreline. Just drag it on out. And if that shoreline blends a little bit, that brown blends a little into your paint, that's okay. Because we kind of have muddy water anyway. Okay, great. So we're going to keep moving forward using our shoreline color, adding a little more brown. I'm going to add our next shoreline, which just comes out like this. You don't want to make your angles too steep because this is farther away from us and it is pretty flat, so you want to have uh, if you look here, this is horizontal. It's a, about a five degree angle, this line here. So you don't want to have like a 45 degree angle or it's going to look a little unnatural. Just pull that back. Just very lightly using my brush to pull this color around. Got one more right here. A little bit of a steeper angle added. Next, I'm gonna mix some sap green with brown, my yellow ochre, 
Yeah, it looks like a good combo. Still using my uh, small brush, brown tipped brush. And I'm gonna paint over what I had there because we're moving forward closer to the foreground. I'm just adding some trees. Same thing we did before, just hold the brush up at an angle so it can give you this appearance of treetops. Still following our line to see where our tree line is. And right now I'm just kind of pulling that down. covering up all this space with my trees. Just using some green for now. Got some more on this little inlet. All right, so my paint is pretty uh, thick there and it's pretty wet, so we're gonna let it sit and we're gonna come back to this and add some of our autumn colors and our highlights and shadows later, but I'm gonna let that sit for now. We're gonna to continue to work on the water. So mixing our blue and just like a hint of black. Maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. All right. I'm just going to let this blend into the other color. Should still be wet. Also, going to start blending some white with that color we made for our sky. I'm going to blend that into my blue. I just want to see how that looks. I feel like that would look nice. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Using a little more of my sky blue over here. And we're going to make this have like a little bit of an angle too. We don't want just a flat line here. Gonna be a little bit angled. Same thing with this one. We can even add some more brown if we need to touch this up. We can just do that a little bit. Okay, we're going to mix white with that light yellow and a hint of orange. Let this blend. And I'm just going to blend some white into my water just to give me a little more of the reflection that we have in the sky here. And I'm just kind of letting that blend in with my colors and not blending it too perfectly because I like these little streaks that it's making. It looks like a nice reflection in the water.
then we're gonna have like a little bit of a reflection in the water here. So we'll just take a little bit of paint and just kind of let that blend with your current color. So that's still wet in the water, but give it like a little bit of color under your ah, under your uh, little piece of land sticking out, and that will give us that nice little reflection in the water. Just let it blend in, just really softly with your brush go back and forth. Alright. We're gonna add a little more green too in the water. For our reflection. blurry it's not really anything too specific okay now we can let that dry a little bit longer and I'm gonna start working on the ground and the foreground so I'm gonna go back to my medium-sized flat tipped brush and I'm gonna start with brown a little bit of white some crimson and some of my blue a little more crimson all right now we've got like a purple brown and I'm just gonna use that to show my border where this meets our lake. Gotta blend some more. And we can add our little path here back and forth. And up and down. And we're gonna do more to that later, but for now we're good. Okay, I'm gonna add some more of this dark color. Purple brown. I'll add some black. I'm just gonna fill in this whole space with that color because I am gonna, this is basically like our dirt that's gonna be under all of our vegetation. And if I have this nice base, then that makes it easier for later. I won't have to go around all of my objects that I painted. I can just paint over top of this Make sure you cover up all the white space on the canvas. You don't want to leave any little bits of canvas peeking through. Okay, now we have a nice base uh, for our foreground and we can let that dry. And I think uh, now might be a good time to add, while this is still drying our trees here, I think now it'd be a good time to add our big tree stump. So I'm just gonna keep using the dark color I just made that was black with red 
I'm gonna throw in our tree trunks. I think I said stump before, but I meant to say trunks. And I'm using my medium-sized flat-tipped brush. You definitely need a flat tip brush for this one. And you can dip your paint in a little bit of water and that'll help you to get a nice smooth layer of paint down and will prevent you from having like frigid, uh, like, uh, brush, like a brushy look of an edge. Looks a little bit more smooth. Okay, mix a little more black. Now this tree, one of the trees is straight up and down. This tree's got a little more curve to it, so I'm just kind of letting the brush go ahead and it's getting a little bit thinner as it goes up. Just like that. You don't have to make it perfect. Just get a little squiggle in there, but in general have the tree go up and then we're gonna have a little branch coming off of it. This one's gonna have a little bit of a twist to it as well. One more branch up here. Your branches start out thicker at the base where they meet the trunk and they get thinner as they go out farther away from the tree base. We got one on this side, on the left. This one starts way down here and it's mostly straight with a couple little squiggles in it. do one more right over here it's thinner right on the edge I have this one just come out like that and I'll stop right there alrighty so now we're just gonna let the current paint dry if you have a hair dryer you could dry it with your hair dryer uh, or you could just, you know, take a little drink break or a snack break for about 5-10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll uh, add some highlights and shadows to these trees here and then we'll really add detail to the foreground and then uh, just do a couple little touch-ups and then this will be all done. And don't be discouraged if right now your painting doesn't look like this or if it looks really like blotchy because if you make a mistake you can always let it dry and then paint over it if you have white spaces on your canvas and just make sure you fill in those white spaces with the color um, if you have like these brush stroke looks where you can like kind of see the white through your brush strokes just let it be for now let it dry we'll add more layers later and that will completely cover that up okay so our paint is mostly dry and I'm ready to continue working I'm going to use small round tipped brush get the excess paint off of it and I'm gonna clean it off a bit and we're gonna start working with our shadows again so I'm gonna mix my sap green with some blue into that darker uh, black red mix we had before I'm just gonna add some little puffy shadows to our trees in the background. You want to put a couple little uh, diagonally oriented shadows and that kind of shows us where the trees uh, little valleys are in the forest here and how the trees come down the slope where we have our little valleys in between it just makes them look more three-dimensional and I'm keeping most of my shadows down at the bottom of the tree line and I'm gonna add one more I'm gonna add a little more over here just to separate these two Alright, good. 
Now we can use some of our fall colors. So I'm going to mix my yellow with my cadmium red. My sorry, my um, yellow ochre with this red. I'm just going to throw a couple little brush strokes near the tops of the trees. And here you can just kind of go around the, tr the big trees in the foreground because we're not really going to move those. They're going to stay. Just using little brush strokes with our small round tipped brush. Okay, now I'm just going to take some red on my brush and I'm going to, woo, that's a little too much. I'm going to mix that red with a little bit of orange, a little bit of cat or a uh, yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of white too. Just brighten that up. A little more orange. Yeah, that's a good color. And we'll just have a nice bunch of red trees. I'm gonna mix some of my yellow and see if I can make, yeah, nice autumn -y orange. Keep that up here. So you want to make it look like there are a f like a few rows of trees, not just one row of trees for all of these spots. I'm gonna take some yellow and my sap green and some white. That's a good color too for fall. And just kind of put a few little spots with our brush, mostly at the tops of these trees. Kind of sprinkling it in wherever I think would look nice. Shows us where the trees have little valleys. Okay, cool. So we've got our autumn leaves and those trees in the background. Now I'm mixing some black with my brown and I'm just going to put a little line under our trees again. Kind of blend that in just a little bit into the base of some of these trees. That'll give us our nice shoreline. And another one. Right here. Next, I'm going to throw in a little plant I see here by mixing, plant I see here by mixing my black with my sap green. We've got a little plant. I'm just using my um, small round tipped brush and I'm making little leaves. So I'm very, very lightly holding this brush. like. It could fall almost, like you know, almost by how lightly I'm holding it, and you're just letting it dab gently, kind of making a little line with your dabs, not actually making a line. And let the brush do what it wants. If it wants to put a dot, it can do a dot. If it wants to do like a little longer line, then that also works. And that's going to give us this little plant we have here. And the 
Lines and dots are more concentrated in the center because that's the base of the plant. And we've got uh, plant branches oriented towards us, away from us there, so it makes it a little more opaque and thicker. You want to have a nice thick bottom. You don't want to be able to see that late color. You can see it in between the spots in the plants, but you don't want to see it at the base. You want to have a nice thick bottom there for that plant. Okay, and then using our reddish brown mixed with some brown, we're going to do another one right here. Looks kind of similar. So like I said before, if you had some problems with your water where it didn't look perfect, now is where we are hiding all of those little mistakes because our water is getting covered up by our foreground. And the same thing is going to happen to our sky. It's just good to get some color on there. Okay, and then I'm going to make some black with some red and that's going to give me a nice uh, shadow color for this plant here. So I'm just going to go over some of the spots that I just painted and create a shadow. Whoops, that was red. Yeah, we can also add some red to this plant. That works too. I think I'm going to add a little bit of highlight to that other green plant. So I'm going to mix some light blue with my green. We'll do a little bit of red too. And just kind of in like a couple little spots, throw a couple little highlights in there using your small flat tipped brush. All right, good. Now we've got another plant in front of this guy. And I'm just kind of letting the brush dance again, holding it a little bit tighter, pressing a little bit harder on the canvas. I'm going to take some yellow ochre and some white, blend it in with that green I just had. And now I'm just going to like very, very lightly dab. let this add on to the plant here as a nice little highlight. And then we've got a shadow on the other side of that plant. So I'm mixing green in with my darker brown blend. 